Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. Our scenario is Highway of Blood. It was written by Alex Gallat and Ian Christensen, and it's from Critical Hit Publishing. It's available for download from the drive through RPG. Our game master is Ian Christensen, and this is episode two. So without any further delay, let's continue our journey into the darkness. Ian? Okay, so as we left off, it's the early afternoon and you were leaving the uh, Vincent Brothers scrapyard as the Vincent Brothers, near twins, standing, watching you drive away. Where do you want to go? Well, uh, I'm very interested in this car, but I want to make sure I have... uh jurisdiction on this because I don't want to get, gather evidence of something and then it get thrown out by the lawyers when we try and prosecute this guy Seth. So Chris, what I was going to show you is how we can make this a federal jurisdiction very easily. Uh, I'm imagining that Seth sold that car to them without actually getting the title. And if he sold that car, that's grand theft without the title, that's grand theft auto, which is a felony which puts it under federal jurisdiction. So, Sure glad you guys know what you're doing. Well, I've had, unfortunately, lost some evidence before by, from uh, leaning a little too far forward. So, so, Chris, I say we head on down to the uh, town hall, get some research. He's going to probably Makes claim sense. it was abandoned. So, if, so to be able to claim abandoned property, he would have needed to put a public notice in the newspaper, which I am almost positive he did not. Mm. You're probably right, sir. Oh, head to the town hall there. Uh, um, Richard, maybe we should ask someone, or who, what? The, do we know what the local newspaper is first? Did we see one anywhere? Just so they can't try to pull the wool over our eyes so we know what paper to look at. Well, I don't know if they even have a library in this place. No, we didn't see no. anything general store or anything like that. I'm guessing. Oh, we didn't go in the general store yet. No, we went in. No, we did. You, you we did in. go to the general store. Yeah. Yep. Did we, see, did we see any newspapers kicking around, or was it just canned goods and dust? Um, there might have been. Yeah, you probably saw some out of date. You know, some old newspapers from. Uh, oh, what would be the nearest place with with the newspaper publication? Marathon. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't even know. Yeah, Marathon might have a uh, have a paper. Okay, all right. all right. Something like the the Marathon Herald, like a little fucking eight page rag or something. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know how big that town is actually. But. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, you didn't see anything like an abattoir, you know, abattoir daily or anything. No. Mm -hmm. I don't think okay. they have enough people. It could be easier if we just call the county where uh, title transfers are. We'll find that that he never filed. I, I almost guarantee that 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 guy did not follow the law. Walk around with bolts sticking out of his head. <laughs> yeah, freak! What a freak! Yeah. So you go into town hall, or? Yeah, I'll head. That's where I was gonna go. You guys want to get dropped off somewhere else? No, I think we should stick together. This whole thing puts a real creepy vibe in my back of my neck. Can't imagine why. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll pull okay. the uh, the the Ford up to the town hall. You guys still have the map I gave you last week? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, probably. Let me... So you pull up to. The, uh, the town hall, which is building 3C on the map. So it's um, right in between uh, Tom's Barbershop and um, what's the other one? 3E, which would be, um, yeah, the now closed, well, long time closed, looks like Abattoir Grocery and Liquor Store. Right. <clears throat> so you pull up to this uh, two-story red brick building has ruddy terracotta shingles. 
um, and a, a painted wooden sign mounted above the main entrance, Abattoir Town Hall, established 1943. The sign is still legible, but it's clearly seen better days. Hours posted on the door state that the town hall is open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, yeah, so you going on in, you leading the way, Richard, yeah? Yep. So the inside smells of cigarette smoke and a strong lemon scented cleaner. There's an older man in a gray vest and white shirt sitting at a desk facing the main entrance. There are doors to the right and left of the desk, as well as doors in the center of the right and left walls. There's an eight by 10 photograph of President Gerald Ford hanging in the center of the back wall. And on the desk is a single black telephone, a typewriter, and a stacked in and out tray. Uh, hello, good sir. Uh, Agent Carlisle here. I was wondering if I could uh, bother you for some assistance with the case. Oh, um, me? Uh, okay, well, what can I do for you? Yeah, we're, this guy's uh, uh, middle-aged, slender. He has a receding hairline combed over the front. Average build. His clothes are meticulously clean, which is probably, you know, the first one you've really seen like that in Abattoir. Um, well, I was wanting to look at uh, your records and uh, car, car title transfers specifically. Uh, do you uh, keep those documents here? Oh, I, uh, I don't really take care of stuff like that so much. I mostly uh, serve as a postmaster town clerk. Um, ah, I understand. We don't have uh, much need for things like that in Abattoir. Oh, well. I I understand. I understand that. Uh, may I borrow your phone and a phone book then? Sure. He reaches under the desk and pulls up an encyclopedic, you know, Texas fucking phone book. Mm -hmm. I will turn to the blue pages, which were the government pages back then, and uh, okay. look up the county uh, county seats uh, phone number. Okay. DMV. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll find it. No problem. Flip through, and then I'll I'll dial them up. You pick up the phone. There's no dial tone. Hmm. Great, uh, sir. Uh, your phone seems to be dead. Oh well, I'd expect why I have that explain why I haven't had any calls in a couple of days. Yeah, it's a nice uh nice setup for a job. Uh. What, do you think I don't have work to do? Look at this. He gestures to the in and out tray. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, and wasn't implying you didn't have work to do, just implying that uh, you would not have any outside uh, things to bother you with the phone work. No, oh, it's okay. I'm used to you hoity-toity city folk looking down on people like me. That just because I live in this intention. backwards little town. Yeah, you think you're better than me? Because oh, you're not, a federal sir. agent? Oh, no, I do not, good sir. Just here to uh, to assist. Well, I'm going to pull the I phone don't, call. I don't see call. how you're assisting me right now. Well, I'm sorry to have uh, wasted your time. I'm sorry, I should be so, so impolite. I, it's this heat. He uh, pulls up a... a uh, little uh, or a large like bottle of, of water and pours it into the uh, dirty looking cup on his desk and mm. it's not like filthy dirty but it just it looks like it he's been using the same cup of water for a couple of days right okay mm. okay he says it's uh, hotter than a whore in church out there right now yeah that's a uh, inelegant way to put it but yes it's very true how long have you been living here in the abattoir? A couple just of a, years now. A couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we're we're just sort of passing through, um, but we're we're doing we're we're looking for information That's on things. That's what just about everybody does around yeah. here. Smart too. If I'd had any sense a couple of years ago, I probably should have just passed on through too. But 
Yep. Why'd you stay? Those those property prices, I tell you. Yeah, we keep hearing that. Uh, So what did you pay for? Are you living in a house? Mm, Yep. Got a great deal on it. Scott Brown, right down the road. Scott Brown. Looking to buy. How much did you end up paying? I can't recommend investing in Abattoir, though, to be honest. It's pretty dead around here. What do you guys do for fun? He he spouts out uh, a, a ridiculously low amount of money for for 1975 for a house. Basically, he got uh, he got a nice uh, two bedroom house for less than you'd pay for a trailer home in most places. Yeah. Uh, Jam, like I know, like a, you know, I sent you a message there, but I'm I didn't oh, want to sorry. interrupt people. Oh no, I didn't want to interrupt people. I'm. Uh, well, 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 these guys are talking. I'm just sort of casually looking out the window, just in case I'm feeling a little antsy, maybe just in case people are taking an interest in us. Okay. See if there's anybody we recognize wandering the streets looking in on us, that kind of thing. Um, let me take a quick gander at the map. I believe you're right across the street from the last stop, aren't you? Yes, you are. Um, yeah, you can kind of see, you know, there's a couple of locals that are sitting drinking on the porch in front of the motel. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're staring at... Uh, seem to be staring at the town hall drinking smoking there's actually give me um hmm no don't have to make any roll for it forget about it no. um but you can just see that it's a little unsettling the way they just kind of stare they don't seem to be conversing or anything they're just occasionally taking a drink of their which you must assume at this point is lukewarm beer and puffing away at their hand rolled cigarettes and just uh almost dead eye stare just staring over at the the town hall or maybe they're staring at your car you're not sure which hard to tell from across the street let's make note of it hmm? so I'm that sorry. said they, they were kind of staring at you when you first went into the last stop too they, you figure yeah. they don't probably get a lot of outsiders coming through abattoir so i'm sorry what was your name Ernie. Ernie? Well, Ernie, the hot, the heat and the the dust and the dirt and the small town's not easy. I understand. So you guys work in a case here? Oh, uh, yeah, miss, missing persons. Man, what did, you, what did you do to deserve such an assignment? Uh, it's my niece and nephew. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. I, yeah. I apologize again for my rudeness. Um, so, I got a kind a of an, thing. I got a kind of an odd question for you, though. Uh, I, I haven't seen any ladies around here. Nobody shopping? No. I think uh, the aesthetic of abattoir doesn't really sit well with the, uh, the, the gentler sex. You know, so it's kind of rough on them, huh? Yeah. Have you seen the locals? Well, I see that there's no kids in the school, so I assume there's. No, if listen, if my old lady hadn't left me years ago, I would have never settled here either. There's no way my wife would have let me buy that house, uh. even at the price I got it for. Or if she did, she'd expect me to flip it and sell it right away. Hmm. That's that'd be another hard thing to do in this town, I imagine. Anyway, Abattoir is no kind of town to raise a family in. Hmm. What kind of future people got in this town? Unless you already have a job, like I do. Well, I don't know. I haven't seen any help wanted signs in probably a couple of years. Hmm. Well, the uh, doctor seems to be doing all right. Oh, sure. He's uh, he's been here a long time. Well established. Abattoir old blood, you know? Mm-hmm. <sighs> and uh, as backwards as Abattoir is, I imagine the doc probably had made a good amount of money himself before he, uh, before he came here in the first place. He, uh, he's pretty much set for life, I reckon. You know, doctors, have you seen the salaries they make? Yeah, yeah, I have. It's, it's impressive. I have. That's one word for it. Exploitative is another. You think? You think... uh, It's cheaper to die than it is to get sick in this country. No. Well, 
while he's talking, I'm going to actually uh, check the phone cord, see if it's plugged into the wall. Yeah, good call. It is. Okay. It says the line's probably down somewhere. It happens sometimes. Storms pass through or something, you know, a bit of wind, whatever. It doesn't take much to knock out a phone line in abattoir. Yeah. What it does take a lot is for somebody to come out and fix the damn things. Hmm. Trying to cut you off. Hmm. I reckon local folks around here probably like it that way. Cut off from the rest of civilization, as it were. When's the last time you got a phone call, do you, do you recollect? Oh. I talked to somebody there a couple of days ago. What day is it? Do you remember? Is it Tuesday? Monday, Tuesday? It's Monday now, isn't it? Yes. I think we said Friday. Yeah, it must have been Friday. Hmm. Really not that long ago. I assume you had the weekend off, so. Yeah, it's, it's one of the few perks of the job. All right. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, gentlemen, did you have anything Sorry, else? I couldn't I... be much more help to her. And, uh, That's all right, I Ernie. Do, I do hope you find those those missing kids, but. You haven't seen Listen, any. Uh... Uh, I don't mean to pry, but. You know, were they uh, were they into drugs and stuff? You think? Not that I'm aware of. Um, Actually, were... you are. Oh, am I? Yeah, Jack has multiple arrests for minor drug offenses. Jack, Jack's a bit of a pot and trip head. Uh, Janice is a good girl. Janice was actually uh, working as a receptionist at the same Austin uh, police station where the you know Wallace's Wallace was stationed. Well, I'm still going to answer. Not that I'm aware of, because I'm not going to discuss my mm -hmm. family problems with this guy. Um, but why do you ask? Well, it seems like a lot of the tourists or whatever you want to call them that do come through here tend to be looking for remote places they can go out and do their LSD and mm. peyote and what, you, what is it? What does the kids say? They like to, they like to trip out in the. Uh, Tune in. The desert. Yeah. Drop yeah. out. You wouldn't happen to know where some of these abandoned places are, or deserted places are. You could maybe go check well, those yeah. out. Yeah, actually. A lot of times, I mean, there's a, did you see the uh, the big trailer home uh, estate on the way in? Oh, yeah. Could, That's yeah, all abandoned how... out there. A lot of, a lot of times, uh, kids would go out there and party. Um, you know, they could, they could squat there. Nobody gives a shit around abattoir. It's not like mm -hmm. the sheriff uh, really does any kind of regular patrols through abattoir to enforce the law or anything. Right. That or the old mining camp out out uh, on the east east. Let's just say east for me. East of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the old White White Wayland mining camp. That's all abandoned. Mm. Has been for twenty years now, nearly. Is that long before I came here? Brothers. Hmm. That's how past Vincent Brothers is it. Or no. Oh, the mining camp? Yeah, it's well out oh, past. Best... Out. Yeah, <laughs> you'd have to go out out, uh, out the Red Road. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Heading out east into the, uh, into the backbone. Or is that in relation to, uh, we keep hearing about this homestead. The homestead's a, on, the, on the left end of the city. Give me a spot hidden roll. City. Okay. The town. Pass. Uh, hard. Okay, you immediately see his expression change and his demeanor changes. He gets a little bit more demure and kind of, he looks a little afraid when you ask him about the homestead. He says, homestead? Oh, well, you've heard about that place already? Yeah, well, that's, that's out Red Road as well. Not as far as the mining camp, but it's an old adobe fort out there that, mm -hmm. uh, that the, uh, the reverend has uh, turned into his his own little compound out there. He's got his flock all living out there with him. They're, they're trouble. Yeah, we, uh, we met one of his flock uh, earlier today. Seth. Okay, you don't have to make a roll to see. He, he like almost, almost audibly gulps at the mention of Seth. He goes, oh, you met Seth, did you? 
I guess it's a lucky thing you're a lawman. Uh, maybe maybe he uh, took it a little easy on you then. Seth is, uh, oh, he's bad news. He bought us bad news. Oh, oh, always getting in fights and stuff, even with his own men. Hmm. Well, men like that, sooner or later, someone bigger than them comes along and knocks them down. A lot of his men are bigger than him, but Seth, he makes up for it with uh, zeal, I suppose. I think mm. uh, I think that Reverend Austin just gets him all riled up. Mm. Yeah. You, you'd be best off uh, avoiding that place. If you want a church, go to the blood of the lamb. It's practically empty most days anyway, but uh, Reverend Scott, he, he's he, he's a terrible drunk, but He's a oh, good yeah. person. He's a good person. Yeah, we met him. He seemed he Those seemed others, like a good man. The uh, he kind of like he almost like looks over his shoulders. And says, the, the dust billies we call them out there at the <laughs> compound, at the homestead. They uh, well, I don't think their family trees have very many branches. You know what I'm saying? Uh, sadly. <laughs> Anyway, that's why you're not going to see any women and children around Abattoir. Mm-hmm. Are there any, any sensible there man Homestead? with a family would move on quickly? Understood. Oh, I was saying, are there women and I oh, was sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was saying, are there any women out at the homestead? I don't know. I don't know. They might have some women out there, but if they do, they keep them well under lock and key. Never been there myself. I know the place. No, no interest in going there either. If I have a post for the Reverend or anybody out there, I get one of the local lads here to run it out there. Mm. Give him a few bucks. That place gives me the creeps. Ain't got much time or, or patience for religious zealots. Pretty sad considering Billy Scott's a Pentecostal minister, and well, I'd rather talk to him any day. What's their religion, do you think? Are they just rival Christians or? Yeah, some kind of radical sect of Christianity all about doomsday, Armageddon, snakes and fire and oh, hell, those brimstone, people. all okay. that stuff, you know? Yeah. Mm. Nice. Well, he's, he, got, you know. he's, uh, he's a little bit more, a little bit more tame. Wow. Oh, Pinnock. All right, well. Well, we've good. kept you from your work long enough, I suppose. That's not a lie. But uh, oh. listen, uh, really, I do wish you the best. I hope you find those kids. Um, but if you don't, just leave this place. Don't don't look back. There ain't nothing good here. Mm. Mm. Well, it's good, good to meet you. Likewise, likewise. You boys, uh, well, you you just you be safe out there. We will. I uh, turn and walk out. Yep. So once we get outside, I'm like, well, I didn't want to discuss it with them, but uh, Jack has had some problems with drugs, hmm. and uh, Janice hasn't, so far as I know. But I don't know about. Uh, Janice's boyfriend, and I don't know about the other person that went with him. There were four of them total. Um, I'm starting, I, I, I don't know, I've never done drugs myself, so when I think about it, I'm thinking that those abandoned um, houses out there as we drove into town, uh, probably know they could be, they could have parked their car and gone into one of those houses and mm-hmm. In the meantime, Seth took their car and ran off with it. Or, could have. And and they're uh, closer than the mine, so we might as well, yeah. s- well start the closest one. Well, if it's not there, then it would be the mines. Yeah. When we're outside, I'm going to look up at the building and see if the phone line's still l- running into it. Yeah, looks fine. Okay, so it is somewhere else, and it's down. Yeah, All it's right. somewhere, not just this building, probably. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. You want to try next door and ask them if their phones are down? 
Well, wait, the phone worked in the bar. Remember, I called the gas station. So, oh. but I'm not going to run up a long distance charge. The barkeep is already giving us a couple free drinks because Seth didn't pay for our drinks. So, all right, we'll run with a uh, reasonable suspicion. This is not. I don't know why this damn fool kids came out this direction. Yeah, I did a lot of stupid stuff when I was a kid, too. It's different. Kids don't realize the kind of weirdos and maniacs that are out in areas like this. This Seth sounds like a real... Well, we saw him. Certainly, I can say he was a nice boy. No. No, he's trouble. (laughs) Well, we want to get down there. Uh, I, do, I imagine it's going to get dark when the sun goes down. Yeah. All right, well, let's go take a look. Are we going to stay in this town tonight? Well, they offered us a room at that one place. Yeah, for eight yeah. bucks. I hate to do it, but, I mean, it took us a good time to drive out here. When there ain't much else around here. We're not going to hit everything tonight. Whatever. All right. We got gasoline here so we can fill up. Make yeah. sure we're not right. we're running out. A marathon or something. All right. Let's 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 head on over to those estates and see what we can find. All right. Heading over to the um, <clears throat> Wayland Estates. Mm-hmm. So you drive back up Main Street, heading back towards the Esso Station. The turnoff for Wayland Estates is a little bit before you get back to the Esso Station. Um, as you uh, as you turn in, you can see if you have your map too. You can see the kind of layout to it. There's a long road that goes down, and kind of loops around back. There's also another side road off of that, and uh, on the right side that kind of does uh, what do you want to call it? Does almost like an O shape back to the road Mm -hmm. and then there's a couple of side roads on the left hand side that just go out and kind of loop around and come back with trailers all along the sides um in kind of the center of it all there on the left side i suppose is um the wayland common which is uh two 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 to be yeah or not to be um are there any trees or is it just like a big field? Yeah, that's really just like a big dusty, <laughs> dusty, big field. dusty field, you know. Um, God, I had it. I would have hated to mow that when it was green. On the uh, the first left hand side side road, there's a there's a bit of an old playground out there, um, and uh, at the very uh, end is the uh this is the wayland memorial the memorial heading towards the cemetery so, mm. um i already read the description of the sign um so yeah the road looking into the state looks like it's been very rarely traveled you know it's mm-hmm. pretty well overgrown um but obviously some people do drive out here sometimes so it's not it's not like a jungle of tall grass or anything of that sort. But Are uh, these houses or are they trailers? These are mobile homes, yeah. Okay. And the, homes, they're in, the yards in, are... Hmm? They're in bad repair, falling apart. Yeah, they're, they're in quite bad repair. The yards are all overgrown. The mobile homes look like they've been abandoned for quite some time. Um, all of the various abandoned mobile homes are a bit different. Time and weather has erased most of the personal touches that were once made, uh, that once made these places feel like home to someone. <clears throat> Some of them still maintain their basic outline, while others have partially collapsed. Um, these latter structures are filled with dirt and, and dust that has blown in over the years. You can just see it, you know, obviously through the collapsed walls. Um, Keep your eye out for any evidence that the kids were here. Um, it's probably beer bottles everywhere, I'm guessing, in a place like that. 
Yeah, well, in the um, <clears throat> in the areas around the mobile homes, you can see crumbling brick patios, rusted barbecue grills, discarded propane tanks, metal trash cans full of empty beer bottles, um, the occasional remains of a decades-old vehicle. Um, all of the, the mobile homes are virtually identical in their basic design and layout. Um, rectangular, about 52 by 13 and a half feet. Um, white with aluminum awning running along the door side of the house. Few of them are on cinder block foundations, but most are just resting on wheels with four adjustable steel supports at the corners. Um, glass is broken in many of them, leaving the tattered sun bleached curtains to blow in the desert wind. Just uh, keep, the, keep the buildings on your right, and let's do the whole loop. Just follow along. Go kind of slow, and I'll yeah. keep my eye out one window. Drive Chris, you around, look at the other. Look at the kind of good. signs of life. I'll do it. Good plan. Yeah. Signs of life or signs of recent, you know, in case somebody's or just a car. Yeah. I'm wondering if there's enough dust and dirt that we might see tire treads going up and, you know, wherever the car may have been. Or or weeds that have been pushed down by people walking through them. Mm-hmm. Okay, give me a give me a spot hidden roll. All all of you as you're looking. Forty. Let's see what forty is on my spot hidden. Oh, regular sixteen. It's a regular pass. I got a sixteen out of forty-five. Okay, nice. it's a hard success. Yep. Yep. Okay, you as you're kind of looking around, you see one of those curtains kind of move as if somebody was peering out and just let it go. Did did any of you see that? Oh, I think there's somebody in that house. You think? Oh, I saw the curtain move. Don't stop. Don't stop. Go down a little bit before we stop. <laughs> All right. And I'll pull down uh, about two trailers down. Mm -hmm. And I stop. Well, let's go check it out. I mean, we came here looking for signs of life. Why did we why did we move down a couple of place spots so that we have to run all the way back to the car? <laughs> <laughs> this is um, so they don't the third, see us the front. If you're going straight down the the long road first, this would be mm -hmm. the after the first turn off on the left, which goes to where the old rusted playground is. Mm -hmm. This is the third trailer home down where you saw the uh, the curtain move. Okay, on the left hand left hand side of the road. Well, all right. So I I get out of the back seat. Okay. Yep. Get get out. Um. And uh, walk walk uh walk around. And somewhere. like like Chris said, I don't want to go right to the front door. Just kind of maybe uh walk uh walk around to the back trailer. Okay. <clears throat> Give me a uh, listen roll. Ooh, hard. All right. You hear some sound from inside, like a little shuffle of movement, and then you hear the sound of a couple, it sounds like a couple of empty beer cans falling off of a table or a counter or something onto the ground, the, the, the kind of clunk clunk sound of those. Uh... Did they have aluminum cans in the 70s, or were they still using sure. tin cans? Probably aluminum, yeah. Yeah, yeah we had aluminum. Yeah. So, never really thought about it until just now, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll yell out, Janice. Janice, is that you? You hear nothing. Hmm. Chris, what? Watch my back. I'm going to go up to the door. Yeah, and I'm behind Chris. So this is one of the ones that has not collapsed yet. It's one of the the. Okay. You know, homes that's in better repair. Glass is still busted out of most of the windows, but right. Go up. I'll knock and then kind of stand up so I'm not standing in front of the door. No, you hear nothing. Door. No response. Right. Nobody answers. 
I'll go to Richard. Do you want me to go around back? Uh, okay. First, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's open this door first. Like, grab the uh, knob. And... Yeah, a little, little handle things, yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I assume the door opens out. Yep. Okay. Did you pull it open? Yep. Okay. And a man charges at you with what looks like some kind of a folding lawn chair, and he tries to hit you with it. You want to dodge or fight back? Uh, I'm going to dodge. Okay. Uh, ooh, yeah. That's hot. A hard dodge. Oh, you dodge easily. Yeah, he kind of like misses you, and then he stumbles and falls out of the mobile home and trips over and kind of down the, the couple of steps that lead up to the door and out into the uh, the dust. You see a, um, <clears throat> let's see here. You see a short, thin man with a straw with straw-colored hair and unkempt beard. He has a crooked nose, looks to have been broken and never properly set afterwards. He's got shabby, mismatched clothes. Um, yeah, and he's cursing and trying to pick himself back up. And he looks, he sees there's three of you, and he says, "I, I don't want no trouble. This is my home. You're 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 trespassing." Hey, you can smell the alcohol coming off of him. Hey there, uh, you know, we, we're just, uh, we're looking for, for someone and you're the first time of life we saw around here. Well, you found somebody and, uh, I don't want no trouble, but I'm, I'll sure give it to you if you want. And he kind of picks up the half broken lawn chair, which he fell over and shakes it and it rattles almost comically. No, no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna hurt you. We're not, we're not here to bother you at all. Are any of these other houses inhabited? You got any neighbors? Hmm. He looks at you. He says, well, neighbors? No, that's why I like it here. It's just me, all alone. We're looking for a couple of young people. Uh, uh, young people come out here all the time, disturbing my peace. Mm -hmm. uh, this would be... Uh, now, I wasn't clear on the... Is it two boys and two girls? It was three boys and a girl. Three boys and a girl. Three boys and a girl. About, you know, early, early 20s? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I don't pay any mind to them. Kids come out here when, when they come through Abattoir. They, they come out here to, to drink and, and smoke and do the drugs. Some, sometimes, they're, sometimes they're nice to me. Uh, sometimes they even share. You but, seen uh, any of them in the last couple of days? Some of them ain't so nice. Some of them see somebody like me down on this luck and they think it's somebody they can take advantage of. Well, ain't nobody taking advantage of old Pete today. And he oh. kind of brandishes the, the broken lawn chair. Okay. He looks to be intoxicated. He hasn't even noticed the, the sidearms you're carrying or else he might maybe calm down a bit. But... Right. Well, oh Pete, uh, did you want to answer my friend there? Uh, you know, did you see uh, three, I, three I, guys and a girl? I approach and I, I show him the pictures. He kind of steps back a little bit and realizes you're just holding pictures in your hand, and he kind of like stares at him, closes one eye, and blinks with the other. <laughs> uh, it don't look familiar to me. All right. I. I ain't seen, uh, well, I don't even know, man. The days, they all seem the same. The last time anybody came out here, uh, talked to me, it must have been a few weeks ago, maybe a few months. I, I don't know. Lose track of time. It's hot. Yeah, that's that's it. The heat. Yeah, well, I understand that. So hey, can Pete, you tell Mike? us? Go ahead. Oh. Hey, Pete, mind if I uh, take a look around uh, your trailer real quick? You can join me to make sure I don't mess with anything. Why do you want to look at my trailer? Oh, we just want to cross our T's cross our You think our I eyes. did something to them kids or something? You said no, there's I'm four pretty... of them, right? Yeah. What am I going to do to four to four young young kids? Oh, I'm not saying you did anything to them. I'm saying maybe they might have come to do something to you, and you're just scared to tell us. 
Maybe they're in there. They got you sc- They told you if you said anything. You want to make some kind of a social role? Yeah. What ones am I? It sounds like you're using charm to me. But, yeah. Uh, if you want to change your approach, you can as well. Yeah, they're all about the same. Go, all right, fair enough. Go charm. No, 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 not a ch- gruff FBI. Not. <laughs> I didn't do nothing. I don't hurt nobody. I mind look, my own business here. Look, but it's, it's my, my niece. bad enough as it is. I don't need to be bringing any more trouble on myself. It's it's my niece and nephew, so we're just looking for anything that we can find. Ah, I mean, you can make a social role with a with a bonus die if you like. Uh, what is it? Let's see what I'm gonna do. How about charm uh, or persuade? Probably. I'll do charm. That's easier. Well, I got forty five, and I got forty five. Oh, <laughs> so look at you barely. <laughs> oh, you rolled forty five. Oh, okay. I rolled forty five, and I have, and forty five is my score. So ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Your niece and nephew, family. Yeah, niece, nephew, and a couple of their friends. They came out here. He just drops the lawn chair and he gets this kind of like sad look on his face and he kind of slumps over and says, oh, well, yeah, hey, come on in. You can look around. You can look around all of them if you want, but you can start with mine if that makes you feel better. Okay. Who are you people anyway? What you doing here? You ain't local. No, no. not local. I'm, uh, I'm Dr. Uh, Quinn. And uh, I just pointed you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Just Agent Carlisle. He closes that eye again and blinks a few more times. Agent. And he looks at you looks looks at you like almost like he's seeing you clearly for the first time. He says, Oh shit. You are. You are a cop. Look at you. Yeah. Well now this one here, he must be your uh your rookie apprentice or what what do you call it? Your your my, partner, my- yeah? Yes, he's he's my partner. He's a good one too. Yeah, we young, appreciate. Young man, it. young man, you sure you uh, chose the right life? I don't know. Apparently, the doctor's pretty good in this town, but uh, that's what my dad wanted me to be. But uh, this is what I ended up doing. Oh, c- come on in. You want a Lone Star? Uh, as much uh, as tempting as that is, I might take you up on it uh, later on tonight when we get off duty. Oh, come on, come on. Have a look around. All right. You can go in and look around his uh, his mobile home. It's it's a mess. Uh, you can tell this guy's been living pretty rough up here. You know, there's no working electricity or anything of that sort. Uh, the water doesn't run, you know. <laughs> um, you can see he's got, there, there's probably about 100 empty beer cans in here. Um, and you can see there's like a 12-pack a sitting there that's been ripped open, and it's uh, like less than half full now. And you can only assume it must be piss warm, given the weather oh, yeah. and the lack of refrigeration. Yeah. yeah. So we're just uh, starting to become familiar with abattoir. Um, well, you better stop that right quick. Get the hell out of here. Find those kids and leave. You know any what's what? What are we facing here? I don't, we know this place? it's a goddamn ghost town. Yeah, def definitely. But you Ain't got, nobody wholesome out here. You got some pretty rough people up there, huh? You should ask yourself what kind of a person would choose to live in a town like this. True. How long you been here, sir? Oh, I don't know. Years. What's the date today? 75, 1975, sir. June 1975. 1975. Yeah. Oh, wow, three years. Hmm. Why'd you come here? Get away. Ah, uh, running from something? You could say that. 
running from my own past. Don't much like being reminded of either. Here, have a beer. He hands you a fucking warm can of beer. All right. Pulls one open himself and drinks like half of it down in one one nonstop kind of chug. Oh, I'm assuming uh, when we kind of walked through the trailer, it was just a mess and kind of yeah. a nothing there. Can I do a sorry about my uh, sorry about my reaction when you first came? I'm not used to. I can't remember the last time. It's got to be three years since I last talked to a cop. Oh, it was no harm. Um, can I do a spot hidden as I'm looking around, see if I see Janice's sweater? Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got an 11. Because that's what no. I need. Nothing. 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 No sign at all of, of Janice here. So do you have any people living in these other trailers around you? No, like I said, sometimes those folks who come out here will, will set up in one and they'll fucking, you know, smoke their joints and drink their beers. And, and you didn't see my niece or nephew or anything in the last couple of days? Son, I ain't seen much of nothing the last couple of days. Right. I'm sorry, yeah. I really do wish I could help you find her, but you said they went missing? Yeah, we were you hoping think they that... went missing here? Well, we, we think that they may have disappeared here, yeah. Um... Got to be those goddamn dust billies. The dust billies out on Red Road. Yeah, they're trouble. S- you better stay away from them. Seth right? They don't have people. no respect for no law, neither. Yeah. What what made you think it's them? They're just a rowdy bunch of troublemakers mm-hmm. out there at their compound. That that old windmill out there that they got. Yeah. Every once mm-hmm. in a while they, they light it on fire. It's a damn eerie sight, I gotta tell you. So Burn you've been out there. You've seen it, huh? Yeah, they set fire on the the what do you call them? The the, the fan blades. Hmm. Seems uh, strange. Yeah, well, I don't know. There ain't been no decent folk in this town since I got here, myself included. But uh, I'd say any decent folk that ever did come through Abattoir had any sense about them, they'd be run off by those raisin hell dust billies. If they're Fire and brimstone preacher. I've heard. I've heard some of the locals talk about them. Some of the local folk are nice to nice to me, you know. Yeah, uh, they're not. All, they're not all bad, but uh, but that lot. Trouble. Mm-hmm. Well, well, we, uh, Larry, Chris, uh, don't want to be wasting this man's time anymore. We got some kids that are needing help. Yep. Now listen. Thank you, sir. Like I said, I ain't seen seen those kids, but he says 1975. Well, I reckon I've been in a drunken haze for about three years now. So just because I ain't seen them doesn't mean they ain't been here. But well, we'll keep looking. Thanks for your insistence for your help. Hey, uh, before you go, can you spare a couple of dollars? Sure. I'll uh I'll give him fifty bucks. If, oh man. Well listen, if, if you need anything, anything else, you know, a place to squat for the night, wherever you, you come see old Pete. I'll I'll take care of those who take care of me. You got it, Pete. You're you're Thanks, good sir. people, mister. Sure hope you find that girl. Or the, yeah. Sorry, that girl and boy. Yeah. We do too. All right. All right. Head out. Oh, I don't like this place at all. I don't like it. <laughs> Not one bit. That's I two feel people like in a row that have told us they've been, they made it sound like we're there, there forever and they're only there for a few years. I know. What is this place? It's like a 
it's a magnet for oh three years with nothing to do is hell why they came here they all seem to have come here around three years ago what was three years ago Mm. That's just yeah. a coincidence. I just made up. I have oh. no idea how long. Oh, okay. oh. Here. I just made that. Don't up. give us Sorry. away. We could have spent Damn it. episodes trying to figure that. Son out. of no, a I bitch. I don't want to spend episodes trying to figure <laughs> out what happened in 1969. Was, I want to spend episodes been, finding out what happened to Janice and Jack. 72. That's when that son of a bitch Nixon got real. <laughs> it's all Nixon. about Nixon. Let's yeah. let's go to the Nixon Library. And yeah. All right, that's it's in California, okay. I think. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, let's uh, look at any of the other trailers. Um, uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of them, so I mean, there are. All yeah, it would take forever, we but drive around at least. Yeah, we're gonna. See if we see any more evidence of sure something that looks inviting to a bunch I'm gonna of kids. Gonna pay attention wanna... when I go. Yeah, when I go by the schoolyard, because you know. That was a place I hung out with when I was wanting to sneak a beer. Not the schoolyard, the playground. Yeah. The playground, yep. Yeah. All right. Should, should probably head up to the cemetery, too, after. Or the memorial. Oh, yeah. yeah, the cemetery's right at the end there. Yeah. We'll get all the tour. Let's, um, you know, let's head some, some kids get off on that. Yeah, you'll find, again, discarded beer cans and... Uh, you know, cigarette butts and all that stuff out at the playground. Same at the memorial. Mm-hmm. Um, the memorial he... itself is um, uh, it's, it's filthy. Spray paint. Uh, spray painted? Yeah, they spray paint. Yeah. It's all mm-hmm. graffitied up and everything. And uh, you can just about make out it's a memorial to uh, those who died in the uh, in the mine, in the collapse out at uh, the Wayland Mines back in, when did I say that happened? I think I said it was 56, didn't I? Yeah, yeah I want to say it was 1956. Yeah. Right. Um, if I'm off by a couple of years, it's not going to make any difference. So yeah, we'll say 56. Yeah. And yeah. it lists, uh, there, there, there's uh, 14 names. 14 names, okay. Hmm. When we were cruising around, was there any uh, trailers that didn't look plaps? You know, cause yeah, there's, there's quite plaps. a few. Okay. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, I'll, most of them are pretty pretty badly collapsed, but no, there's quite a few that that aren't uh, that are still pretty much intact. You know, they're badly weather beaten and worn, but yeah. Right. I think we Could should you... sleep in one of those, Richard. No, I was just saying if, because uh, I doubt the uh, kid that Janice and them would have went into a collapse trailer, but one of the ones that's still standing. See if there's any discarded cans around that. The signs that you know people partying would have stayed. Can there. we? Can we say that for the next couple of hours we drive around and look at all these little places, or do you want us to go through? Yeah, sure. No, you want you want to look inside some of them. I'll say, let's pick a, a number. We'll say of the ones that are intact, doors still closed, and like windows and everything still pretty much in place, we'll say there's only maybe a dozen. Okay. Right? So you want to look inside of those. The first one you look inside um, is uh, you find just like an old metal lunchbox with a, a thermos some liquid inside of it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Somebody had smells, kids smells, here. Smells like vinegar. Yeah. No, it's it's like a adult. It's not a school lunchbox. Yeah. It's like, okay. I figured it might have been one of the mine workers or something, maybe, or who knows. The liquid inside smells like vinegar. Might have once been alcohol. Nice. Um, yeah. Find another one. You find an um, an old empty box of borax with a dead scorpion inside. Mm-hmm. Poor scorpion. Yeah. At least he's clean. Next yeah. one down, you find a pair of uh, 
adjustable wooden crutches that are still relatively functional. Mm. Um, the fourth one you will find uh, <clears throat> in the bedroom a decayed cradle containing a pile of moldering blankets that are moving slightly. Uh, I will use a uh, stick or something to maybe yeah. push at those. So there's a varmint in there of some sort. You yeah. find an albino rat with pink eyes suckling her litter of blind, hairless young. Aww. Nice. Mm. Yeah. Next one. Now that's odd. Yeah. You say it's a it's a white rat. Yeah, it's an albino rat with pink eyes, suckling a litter of blind, hairless young. All right. There's something rather strange there. Um. Hmm. Normally, rats in the wild are you know gray or brown or whatever. White rats are usually lab rats. Mm. It's a specific breed of rat. Um, that's odd. Somebody maybe had it had them as pets, but who no. knows? Is there a, a medical lab out here of any kind? That's oh. strange. I've been working in a medical lab. I've seen these things a lot, you know. They're they're used they're they're used because they're all, all almost genetically identical. Mm. So they work really well on on experiments. Mm. That's weird. All right. Yeah. Okay. Next one you find uh, on a shelf. You find a book of poetry by William Blake. Oh. Uh, So in the sixth home, you find a, uh, a nightstand with a small spiral notebook and a pencil. Half of the pages are filled with descriptions of a series of disturbing dreams involving snakes. The last entry indicates that the dreams have become intolerable and that the writer believes that this place is causing them. They further state that their intentions are to move back to Iowa. And that's the last entry in the, mm. in the book. Is there uh, what's the... Uh year the the date of the year for the last entry um are they dated Maybe. this one is dated yeah no we'll say it's dated 1955 this would have been a year before Oof. the big oh wow hmm. a while ago was not hmm. expecting that so we haven't found anything in any of these houses that would indicate recent occupation no no not yet yeah. no in the next one, Ooh. Ooh. you find a wooden box containing four sticks of dynamite underneath the kitchen sink. Ooh, don't touch those. Yeah. If I mean, we old. don't know how old they are. They could be unstable. Mm -hmm. You could probably safely assume they're a couple of decades old anyway, based on everything else you've found so far. Dynamite or TNT? Dynamite? It says dynamite, yeah. Okay, then it's dynamite. Yeah, don't touch them be should make note dangerous. of where it is though for future reference mm. <laughs> after I get to take away you, we'll have to get the explosive ordinance team out here to take care of that on the door. in the next one you find <laughs> you find a mummified human male wearing clothing popular in the mid 60s sitting on the floor he is leaning up against the wall near the door, presumably in the position in which he died. He has no obvious signs of injury. Um, anybody want to do uh, like a medicine check or, or well, something? To I'm try? a forensic scientist, you know. Uh, yeah. Say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me give me a forensic science check or a medicine check or. Um, I got an 18 out of 75. So that's almost an extreme. You do find a snake bite on an exposed ankle, indicating a possible cause of death. Well, he must have been spitten. Um, poor guy climbed in here. Uh, let me yeah. see if I can uh, find a wallet. Um, He's been dead for yeah. so long, so it probably doesn't even smell anymore. Yeah, yeah, you've, you, you'll find a wallet. Um, it's got $12 in it. 
No, oh, uh, almost pays for the fifty dollars that I gave you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and a, a Texas a Texas driving license. Texas driving yeah. license. So I have an expiration date on the driver's license, so we could know about how long he's been here. Yeah. Uh, the driving license expired in 1967. Okay, so he's more recent, but mm-hmm. possibly. I don't know what they did back then. Um, in Texas, that's a good question. Yeah, I want to. I want to say maybe 10 year. I don't know. Arizona does 30 years, so who knows? Jeez. <laughs> I'd say every indication is is that he was bitten by a snake and he crawled in here, rattlesnake Man. most likely, or maybe he. Yeah, Maybe maybe he was bitten in here even for that matter. Yeah, it could no, be. No signs of any. He could have been. Or anything. He could have been. There's no way to tell if he was drunk at the time, unless there's like a bottle in no. his hand. No, um, no, there is not. Uh, well, we need to make note of this too and send somebody. Yep. Out here for this. I mean, we could assume it's after the town shut down. There's no way there was a dead body lying here. That you would have smelled it. People would have complained. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure that that this is probably just a transient or something that's yeah. wandered in here. And Well, what kind of clothes he got on? Is he wearing like, you know, like, it's not like work clothes or anything. No, just, no, it's just like, like I said, just as a, you know, kind of mid sixties fashionable kind of okay. sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. It's not like an FBI agent or something. Okay. Nope. Nope. No, nope. Nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. No, just some poor soul that wanted in here. Yes, um, the driver's license says Christopher Baines. No. Yeah. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> then who's he? 1967. <laughs> Christopher would have been what, like 18, maybe? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So in the oh, uh, in the next one, you find a musty old chair and ottoman in the corner of the living room, choked with dust and mildew, but otherwise in fair condition. On top of the ottoman. Um, oh, sorry, the top of the ottoman, actually, um, it opens, and inside you'll find a, uh, a blanket and an empty hot water bottle. Mm. That's the most important clue of all. <laughs> a hot water bottle? <laughs> yeah. The next one, you find um, a medicine cabinet has a uh, four-ounce bottle of Cherokee. The active ingredients listed as alcohol, chloroform, codeine, phosphate, potassium, glycol sulfonate, ammonium chloride, antimony, and potassium tartrate. There are still three ounces of liquid in the bottle. Good old days. Give me another hmm. medicine check there, Doc. Oh, I can do a pharmacy. Okay, give me a pharmacy check, sure. Oh, nice. Uh, I got a 45 out of 75 on pharmacy. So you reckon ingesting about a quarter of an ounce of this would uh, make a, a normal human become drowsy and fall asleep for eight to 10 hours. Um, I if think someone I'll were to take, that. If someone were to drink too much of it, like maybe say uh, more than an ounce, um, it could cause heart failure. All right, hmm. I'll take that. Hmm. Tastes like cherries. Nice. Mm. Keep around the kids. That's dangerous. <laughs> in the next one, hanging on the wall of the bathroom is an autographed photograph of Elvis Presley. Mm. The frame is weathered, but otherwise in excellent condition. Um, there is a ticket stub from one of Presley's concerts at the Lubbock Cotton Club, October 15, 1955, ducked into the frame. Wow. Does anybody want to take that? Nah, I never liked his music. I mean, you know. I'll, I'll take that. It'll be worth something. I could lie about going one, to meet him. <laughs> in the next one, you find a wrapped birthday present sitting in the bottom of a closet underneath a pile of old rags. Hmm. Still wrapped. Yeah, might as well. Open it. Yeah. Why not? Inside, you find a used black leather jacket and a note. The note says, Happy birthday, Tom. Your brother would have wanted you to have this. All my love, Mom. Mm. Dead man's jacket. Yeah. Fit. 
Is it my size? Does it fit? Uh, what's your luck? My luck is. Do, do, do. <laughs> Move your microphone uh, a little closer. Oh, sorry, sorry. My luck's 65. I thought you were talking to me. <laughs> 65? 65. Yeah. And what's, your, what's your size? Like nice. your character keep, stat size. Out. Uh, 50. Not your jacket size. 50? 50. Uh, it's a little big for you. Because you're kind of small, actually. Average size yeah. is 65, so. Yeah, it's yeah. just like characters just like me, so. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get close it. Yeah. No, it's, it's, nope. it's made for somebody of a size 65, we'll say. Mm. All right. <laughs> and the last of these relatively whole um, mobile homes that you check under the counter is a wooden crate containing um, 12 mason jars of what looks like water. Mm. It's weird. Oh. Let's it... open one and smell it. It's moonshine. Yeah, I was going to say it. Looks like it might be yeah. moonshine. Oh. Mm. Highly intoxicating and flammable. Possibly might have meth. What is it? Uh, uh, the bad alcohol. Methanol. Yeah. Methanol. Methanol. Yeah. We could use this. We could give this to Buddy down the road. Already. Oh, you already gave him 50 bucks. He doesn't need. You could be giving him poison. We wouldn't want yeah. to. Yeah, I mean, we could do of course, honestly, poison might anymore. make him might make him happier. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like uh, they didn't come out to the trailer park. Or if they did, can... they didn't leave anything. They would have drank this. Well, then I go. I suppose they probably went out to the mines. I God, I hope they didn't even stop here. But you said you saw the the license plate. Yeah. Check out the cemetery since we're here. Yeah. I mean. Go out to the cemetery. Yeah, that's. Um, yeah. What time of day is it, by the way? The uh, it's probably getting yeah. dark. Oh yeah, the cemetery is at the end. That's right. Uh, no, it's not the end dark at all. Like, let's mm -hmm. see, it was um, a little after eleven o'clock when you arrived in Abattoir. A little after twelve o'clock when you retrieved your car from the SO station. Probably around one ish when you uh, oh. left the scrapyard and came okay. here. So by this point in time, it's maybe three. Three, four uh, o'clock in the afternoon. Sundown's around afternoon. nine, something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sunday. Four o'clock in the afternoon. Perfect time to it's, be out in the it, Texas sun. It is currently about 110 degrees outside Fahrenheit. Yeah. It's hot. I'm going to see if my the wife. hottest part of the day. I'm going to see if my wife packed an umbrella. I'm going to get that out and for shade in the I cemetery. Know. I think it's called a parasol, Richard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an umbrella if I'm holding it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can grab your, your wife's yeah. uh, packed um, umbrella. So you go out to the cemetery. The cemetery is just barely maintained. Um, somebody, it looks like, probably cut, came out here and cut the grass a couple of weeks ago, maybe. Hmm. Um, there's a few odd stones that are slightly better maintained by um, a presumably people who come once in a while you know to pay their respects but most of them are not okay. if you uh i assume you're going to look around anyway so you yeah. are investigators yeah. so I, the most recent grave you find is from 1967 the vast majority mm -hmm. date back to the mid 50s um i'll do what i always do in the cemetery so look at last names um uh, Specifically, I mean, I'm looking for names that I've already run into, like Brenner and. Um, so they've been here for a while. Yeah, you'll see. Actually, looking at them, you'll find that 43 of these graves all have the same date. That must be the people. Yeah, the mine accident. But wait, yep. didn't the memorial say 14? Yes. There are 43 with the same date here. Does that date match up to the year that we the mine accident happened? It does. July 12th, 1956. Maybe the 14 were the ones they couldn't recover. Yeah, that's uh, that seems reasonable. And these are the ones that they did recover. I mean, 
Wow. Mm. That's no wonder this town shut down. And from the cemetery, we can see the town, right? We're sort of looking down into it. Yeah, it's on a hill, right? Yeah. What What are your luck scores, uh, uh, Dr. Quinn? Oh, what well, this? My luck is currently at uh, 60. Richard? 63. And Chris, you said yours was 65, right? Yep. So 60 is the lowest. Go ahead and give me a luck roll there, Tom. 34. Okay. So as you guys are out here, um, <clears throat> you see a, uh, a man pulling in with a, uh, a pickup truck and he's taking out an old fashioned push mower out of the back. Hmm. In this heat, are you crazy? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll uh, I'll walk over to him. See if he, ask him if he needs any help with that. Oh. Get the mower down. No, no, it's it's fine. It's my job. Oh, good. I understand that. I understand that. Um, so we were out here. We're out here looking for some uh, missing people, and. Uh, we thought maybe they might have come up into the cemetery, cemetery to, to drink. I'm assuming you're the caretaker? That's right. Malcolm Farrell is my name. Malcolm, nice to meet you. Richard Carlisle, good to meet, meet you. Um, how often do you come out here and maintain the cemetery? Uh, I cut the grass once every two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. Uh, when you went and cut the grass last time, did you uh, did you ha find any uh, evidence? Uh, beer beer bottles. cans. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, we find those from time to time. Um, uh, two weeks ago though, uh, yeah, yeah, I found a bunch of Lone Star cans actually. Mm. No, uh, no vehicle or anything uh, up here. Nah, it's probably one of the local. Uh, Either one of the, the the locals could be, you know. There's a there's a few. Um, well, there, there, there's a few uh, homeless people or whatever you want to call them. What, what, some, a few vagrants that that stay around Abattoir. I reckon it was one of them. Uh, Probably old Pete. Where uh, whereabouts did you find all the cans? <sighs> Oof, I think it was over here. He gestures to. Uh, you know, an area near the near the uh, front of the cemetery, near the entrance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry, my cat keeps putting her head in front of the damn. Yeah, that's okay. Stop so it. We're we're not right near the front of the. Uh, we're not near the entrance. At the moment. No, you've been looking around a bit. I was so. going to wander over to where he's pointing to see if I find any. Oh, actually, actually, yeah, you probably are near the entrance now because yeah, that'd be okay. where he'd pull it. That's where he'd be starting up. Yeah. So while they're talking to him, I'm going to wander over there and look around in the grass and see if there's any uh, more evidence of, uh, you know. Yeah, you find, uh, you find a few cigarette butts. Okay. Um, yeah, you probably find a few more cans. Cigarette butts. <laughs> yep. I my... just talked to Pete about that. I, I wish he would stop littering in the cemetery. Does my niece yeah. or nephew smoke? Well, your, your nephew definitely does. Janice... Um, not that you know of, anyway. Janice is a pretty good girl. Well, uh, but Jack, you know, yeah, Jack I, smokes lots of things. I suppose there's not really any way to tell from the butt end of a cigarette what brand it is. Um, yeah, you can sometimes. Sometimes you can, yeah, you can frequently, but um, like, well, at least you used to be able to for sure. Um, I don't know so, about now. Now that well, branding is practically I'll, illegal. I'll peek and look at it and see if, if, I mean, I might not know which brand, but if I can call home, I can ask. Well, it, you realize quickly it's just like a bit of rolling paper and a, and a, oh, okay. that a, kind a, of, okay. a, a crappy little filter. Yeah. So. All right. Hmm. Yep. Hand rolled. Wow. Uh, yeah. That, that'd be old Pete. I yeah. reckon. So, 
you live you live here uh, a while there, Malcolm? Yeah, yeah, I've been out here. Uh, well, most of my life. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, many places. Uh, I, so, since you've been here a while, I imagine you know places where some people out of towners go to hang out, get in trouble. I mean, if we were recommending yeah. down here, but nothing. Yeah, I, I, I know. Sometimes uh, people will come out, find you know, jump into one of these mobile homes, old abandoned mobile homes out here, and and, and party up. And, but you know, like mo most of the people, they just go to town. The last stop, prices are cheap enough. Motel rooms are cheap. Yeah, I hear you. Mm. All right. Well, you. Uh... Hey Larry, you want to show him show him your picture? I mean, it can't hurt. Yeah, we're looking for my nephew and niece. Uh, let me show him. Uh, we think they wandered out in this direction, uh, but we haven't had any contact with them for a few days. Hmm. No, I can't say I've ever seen them, but I don't see many people. I keep to myself for the most part around here anymore. Oh, I see. This town's been pretty dead for the last twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. If I had any sense about me, I probably would have moved on myself when the mine closed up, but yeah, well, you know. Home's home. I got my I got my house out on Ridge Road and uh you know. Mm -hmm. It's paid off. Yeah. So speaking of houses, uh does Scott Brown uh we see his name everywhere. Does he maintain an office here? He seems to uh, know a lot oh, yeah. of what's going on. Hmm. Yeah, Scott Brown, he's out um double check this before I get it wrong. Yeah, Scott Brown's got a place out there on uh, on Main Street. Mm hmm But he lives in town? Just uh just kind of across from the uh oh, shit, let me see if I'm reading this right. Yeah, just across from the school. All right. Appreciate that. If you go back to the main street, go to it's pretty much the last house on, on in town center on the right mm -hmm. um is there anything you can tell us about the homestead homestead well can't tell you much about it i don't go out there myself a little bit too uh rough and tumble for my liking hmm. are they more of a they do they usually come into town at night? Like uh like the set no, they do what, they do whatever the hell they want around here. Nobody crosses them. Yeah. Yeah. They, they got know. this guy, kinda of their uh I don't know what you'd call him. He's like the well, I would call him the ringleader, that'd be the reverend, but the lieutenant, I guess you'd call him, Seth. Oh, oh Seth. yeah. We met yeah. Seth. Yeah. Interesting yeah, they, do, man. They, they, they do just about anything they want around here. Most people don't cross them. What do they do, though? Like, do they come into town a lot? They cause trouble, or are they just... Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes they pick fights. Sometimes with the locals. Sometimes with strangers. Hmm. Interesting. Well, probably, probably trying to recruit people for that cult they got out there kind of hard yeah. to recruit people if you're beating them up. Can you tell us anything about well, that Well, I cult? assume they do the recruiting before they do the beating. Hmm. Can Sorry, you tell me. us anything about the cult? Ah, it's your typical fire and brimstone. Some radical sect of Christianity, if you can call it that. Hmm. Hmm. They seem kind of violent for Christians. You read the Bible, son? It's a pretty violent book. Yeah. I guess some well, people might say they're old school. The Old Testament fire and brimstone guy. Hey, uh, I had an interesting, uh, we were just out here and, you know, looking around. 
What's with the 14 names on the memorial? Oh, those are the bodies they couldn't pull out after the, uh, the, the collapse. That was our guess. Well, there he, he right on. Man, that's, that's a shame. Mm. Mm -hmm. This town's uh, oh, it's older than I think than people think, you know. Sure, it's called Abattoir now, has been ever since the uh, beef company came. But uh, back in the, what, the 40s? No, 30s even, maybe. Whew. Yeah, can't even remember anymore. But this town goes back a uh, hundred years before then. It used to be called Midian. Midian. Now, why does that sound biblical? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, my cult's really bad, so I probably wouldn't know that. Mm. Do any of do, us... do any of you guys have uh, knowledge of the, the Bible, the Old Testament? Well, my character's probably, he's a doctor. He's probably white bread uh, Protestant. Give me an idea roll. Mm -hmm. Uh, 50 out of uh, out of 70. Midian was one of the sons of Abraham. Do any of you know Hebrew? No. No. Okay. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> hmm. well, that's a interesting name for an old, old town. Not really. <laughs> Biblical names for old towns are yeah. <laughs> a dime a dozen. Well, story, story goes that that old uh, yeah, well, it was a it was a bunch of Methodist settlers that set up uh, Midian. You know, mm -hmm. story goes that they all disappeared. Nineteen thirty six. That had been before I came here. Mm. So this my guy's old that my, we're talking. To. My family moved here in oh man, can I remember? Forty two. 42. That's when the uh, beef company set up. They're hmm. out of Chicago. Hackett and Sons. Oh, yeah. Real meat, real people. Real people, real meat. Sure. Oh, real people, real meat. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Uh, new to the town. Hmm. Yeah, they came out here and uh, set up their, their slaughterhouse and meat packing facility and uh, changed the name to Abattoir. People started uh, moving in, and uh, town started to grow. Then uh, a few years later, some prospectors came out and found the uranium out in the hills. That's when the government came in and really fucked everything up. Mm. Well, sometimes they do that. Mm. Yep. Yeah. I was uh, just a young man at the time. I had been working at Hackett and Sons for about uh, six months or so when the uh, Wayland Mining Company came out and set up, and then I went to work for them. Hmm. What did you do in the mine? Mining stuff. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I thought uh, well that the, the pay was good and you know government uh, benefits and all of that, but. Uh, yeah, it seemed to be uh, pretty good for, well, I worked, must have worked there about nine years before the uh, the big collapse and, well, that's 40, uh, what was it, 40, 47, 48 people, something like that died in that collapse. No, yeah. sorry, 50, 57, 58. Good. Yeah. yeah, that's right, yeah. Most of most of them are buried right here. I'm sure you saw the plots. Yeah, all right yeah. next to each other, same date. Yeah, I'm lucky I wasn't in that shaft that day. After that, the mines never really uh, reopened. Government I imagine that financially thereafter. would destroy the company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I took on a small job anyway. Got a got a job there through the town hall, coming out here and mowing the grass and maintaining the cemetery as best I can. Uh, not much I can it's do an important for job. Hmm. I'll uh, 
How long of a drive out is it out to them mines? Oh, let's see. Out to the mines from Abattoir. That's a, that's a good question, Keith. Let me look that up. <laughs> yeah. I'd hate to get stuck out there at night. Um, where is my big map? Let's look at the handouts. Here we go. That's Mining Company Land. Uh, I want to look at the big map of... Here we go. The Devil's Backbone. The Devil's Backbone. There's Abattoir. There's the mines. Well, uh, as the crow flies, it'd probably only be a few miles, but uh, uh, it works out to be a, a few more than that if you're driving out, you know, roads winding around through the cliffs and hills and stuff. Mm -hmm. Still, you know, modern so, cars, doesn't take too terrible long to get out there. Yeah, I got a V8 400. I can get out there and pretty fast in that thing. Uh, I haven't been out that way and. Whew, it's got to be at least 15 years myself. Mm. I don't. Uh, I don't go out there anymore. The place just. Uh, yeah. It's got a sadness to it, you know. I understand. Why is that? And with the uh, well, so many people died there, you know. Yeah. Even before the big collapse, you know, with nearly 60 people dying in a single day, people were dying all the time in the mines. That's hard work, you know. Accidents. Dangerous the, work. The mining company wasn't following, uh, wasn't uh, concerned for the safety of the people or? Not radiation or anything. Radiation. Oh, that's interesting. You know, occasionally they do still send prospectors out every once in a while. I, th I reckon that's what they're checking up on. That's what I think. I think that's why people act so strangely around here. Hmm. Probably some poison in the land or the water i don't know that's well that's just too uh too smart for my for my head you know but that reverend Austin, he set up out there around 1960 started off with a little tent revival hmm man hard to believe that some someone would be successful that far out there well, happens. I suppose in a place as depressed and destitute as Abattoir was in 1960, people cling to just about anything they get their hands on. Some people that might be a bottle, other people it's a Bible. If you ask me, yeah. at the end of the day, one and the same. Well, uh, that's one way to look at it. Both of them offer you some form of security and some form of comfort. Neither one of them's real, son. Nope. Of course, moving out into the middle of the desert's a big gamble anyway, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, well, you know, this place has been desert for well, long as people have been living on these lands, I reckon. Human beings, you know, we're uh, we're uh, we're a real, uh, what's the word for it? Hardy species, you know? We can live just about anywhere if we set our minds to it. That is true. Hmm. Well, Malcolm, we appreciate it. Uh, gentlemen? Oh, I appreciate for... having a little bit of civil discourse for a change. It's been a mm -hmm. while. Thank you, sir. Nowadays, right. whenever I see Reverend Scott, he's too drunk to put two sentences together, so... Sad. Well, Aside from all the Bible bashing, he's he's a good he's a good decent man. Yeah. Him well, and, we saw saw him, him today. John. You been John? over to Thunderbird Gifts? Thunderbird oh. Gifts? Not yet. Oh, you should go out there and check out John. He's one of a kind around here. Hmm. We'll do that. John and Billy, they're good folks. Robert up at the bar, he's not so bad either. Bit of a bit of a pushover. Person, I think his lips are a little bit too attached to Seth's ass, but mm. then again, I suppose, well, you know, I wouldn't want to get on Seth's bad side myself. Mm. Well, 
Gentlemen, should we head out to the mines? We got daylight. Thanks. So. Um, oh, yeah. You folks, enjoy the rest of your, your stay. Uh, hope you find those kids you're looking for. Stay cool, sir. I hope they didn't get lost out there in that desert. It's yeah. treacherous if you ain't got water and shelter. <laughs> Look, feel this heat. Can you imagine being stuck out there all day, let alone just up for a few hours mowing the lawn? Oof. No, I could not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so he starts uh, pushing his little push mower, cutting the grass. Okay. Well, I'm going to head down to the vehicle. All right. Should we, um, you know, this, everything here just seems so very strange. Um, should we take some precaution? Uh, if we're going out past on this red road out to the mines, we're going to be going past that. Uh, well, everybody seems to think it's a cult. The homestead. Yeah. I was thinking that. I mean, you guys got guns, so I guess we have precautions. Yeah. We got that. We got a. We got a peacekeeper in the trunk, shotgun. So two of them. Maybe we nope. should put that in the back seat. I don't know. Uh, you promise just, not to play with it? Yeah, I won't yeah, play you with just your want guns. Doctor Quinn. Oh, I know how to shoot. Yeah. Do I know how to shoot? Hold on, let me check that. Yeah. Let's get <laughs> let's get some water. Uh, no, they know how to shoot. I've got I've got minimum. I oh, yeah, you point it and you pull the trigger. Yeah, it's a shotgun. You just it's made to keep people's heads down. Hold it tight. We'll get some water before we go out there too. Yeah, that's a good it. idea. Yeah. Sure. You stop by the uh, Mathers General Store. Yep. Sure. Yep. He'll sell you some some water. Big mm -hmm. jugs of it. Yep. Gallon jugs. Mm -hmm. What's it coming back then? <laughs> like jerry like, cans? Like. I don't know. What? It's not plastic bottles. No. <laughs> yeah, it isn't, it isn't really, is there? Yeah. They had big gigantic glass bottles for uh, water coolers. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. That's probably what no. it is. Oh, then. that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering. Sorry. No, it's a good point. It's me. something I kind of forget about to think about. Like, yeah, forget it's about not like there's that. plastic bottles like we have. Yeah. Nope. nope. Yeah. Even the, the 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 cokes and tabs come in either cans or glass bottles. So. Yeah. So yeah, he's got um, big glass jugs of water. Sweet. So I'll sell you a couple of gallons of it. Thank you. I'd sell you more, but you know I got to save some for the locals. I understand. No, this will do us. I mean, we're just going out for the afternoon. Mm hmm You picked a hell of an afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, that. you think we should grab some sandwiches from the bar to go? I'm 26. Yeah, why not? I mean, you know, let's get get a couple. Uh, what'd you get? That ham sandwich? That looked ham good. Ham and cheese. It was good. Yeah, ham and cheese. Yeah, let's get that. Let sure. Yeah, they got ham and cheese sandwiches. They got BLTs, liverwurst and cheese sandwiches, oh, cheese yeah. and lettuce sandwiches. Head cheese all the way. Oh my god, <laughs> liverwurst sounds that. so good right now. <laughs> I haven't had liverwurst in so long. Yeah, eleven o'clock at night. I want that. So you guys get a, like maybe a half dozen sandwiches. Four. He'll wrap them up in some tin foil or something. Yep. Mm -hmm. Actual tin foil. Yeah. All right, and so you start heading out. Uh, yeah. Head down Main Street. Turn left on the uh, Hackett Road. Mm -hmm. That'll take you out past the uh, beef company. If we get any stretches, I'm going to open her up, see what this car can do. <laughs> Once you get out there, um, you take the, uh, the Hackett Road out, and you come to um, a, kind of like a little bit of a crossroads. It goes left or right. Uh, left would be northish. Right would be southish, although you can see the road bends around to the east um, in both cases, actually. 
Mm -hmm. And you see a sign there that says Red Road. Um, is it all Red Road? Let me double check that. Make sure I get that right. Uh, yeah. It says Red Road on the sign, right? But the it's been painted with red paint. There's a cross through the word Red Road. Or, or like a, well not a cross, but you know, a slash through slash Red Road. And painted in red, it says Highway of Blood. Hmm. Well, that's uh, vandalism right there. <laughs> Foreshadowing. So, you guys want to go check in Houston and see if they're there? <laughs> oh, oh, Larry. Speech. That's a long drive from here. <laughs> I feel like I'm if in you're looking, those... looking, you could probably tell that this road, um, if you head north, it kind of it looks like it loops around and comes back to the same to the same road just a little bit further south of your location. So if you head right, basically it goes the same way. There is another road that heads off north further off of the road there. Um, not sure where that goes, but this road, if you turn right, anyway, turns more more or less east. And you can actually kind of see even the, uh, you can see the windmill and you can see a bit of the wall of the Adobe Fort out, uh, out east that way. Hmm. So it looks like the one, what, one way kind of goes past it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh. The uh, the fort itself is oh, probably a little over a mile away. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna go that way first. So you turn right onto Red Road. Play and turn on the radio or leave it off. Uh no, I'm gonna leave it off. You leave it off. People, okay. People won't be able to hear. Put it on. Yeah, I know. Just asking. Just I don't asking. want any. I don't want any radar love or anything coming through. <laughs> <laughs> it was going to be born to be wild, but that's okay. Oh yeah, that's classic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you start heading east on Red Road, the Highway of Blood, apparently mm -hmm. renamed by perhaps locals. Um, Richard, give me. You're driving, right? Yep. Give me a spot hidden roll. Zero two. Oh, so as you're driving out there, um, and this is all dirt roads, mind you. This none of this is paved in any sense or you know black topped or anything. It's all just dirt road. Um, as you're driving out, you you notice a plume of dust rising up behind you, and you see what looks like maybe a 1960s or something uh, Dodge Dart speeding up towards you. Hmm. Uh, he's going to ram you. He's going much oh. faster than you. I think he's going to ram us. And I think that's where we'll stop tonight. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, awesome. Our uh, players included Seth uh, Little, Keith Craig, and myself with Ian Christensen as Keeper of the Secret. We're currently producing up to four shows a week with music and sound effects added in post-production in order to create a richer listener experience. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. The costs involved with the show are provided almost entirely by our patrons. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. We have a new patron, uh, Niels von uh, Deuten, has pledged $3 a month to help us produce our show. Uh, and one of our current players uh, and patrons, Fred Carter, has increased his pledge to $5 a month. Thank you so much, Neil and Fred. If you'd also like to support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. You can find a link in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering any questions you might have. This is Tom Riley, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of HP Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck. Good game.